Welcome to Riding with Roy. Whether you're starting to ride for the first time, or you want to increase your distance, or you just want to feel safer on your commute, hopefully this channel will have something for you. I'll be making content on new products, how to meet people to ride with, and generally how to make cycling more fun. There's never been a better time to get into cycling, so join me on Riding with Roy. One of the many fears that new riders have is riding in traffic. Now we'd all like to ride on nice cycle paths but the fact is there aren't that many and those that are, as you'll see in the video coming up, are not very well maintained. So it's a fact that at some point you're going to have to ride on a road. Uh, if you don't ride on a road it's going to severely limit your uh, enjoyment of riding. When there was hardly any traffic on the road it was not uncommon to see four or five cyclists just taking up the whole road so i'm sure it's been a rude awakening now that we've got traffic coming back it'll be a shame if people are put off of cycling by this because now people are returning to work it's the ideal time to start commuting on a bike what i've done is put together a short video today of riding through our small town and as you'll see there's not very much traffic but what there is is still traffic so it's certainly a good place to start to learn to ride in traffic this isn't a definitive guide it's just to give you an idea of some of the techniques that i use uh, i'm a trained ride leader by british cycling and i would certainly recommend going onto youtube and looking at their ride commute uh, videos that will give you a lot more accurate information than i'll show you now but this is just a practical guide of how I would ride in town. We're starting our ride heading in towards Grantham along the A52 which is a busy road. We're using the cycle path here because it's a very very busy stretch. We've got uh, access to and from the A1 and there's a pinch point, there's a, there's a centre reservation so traffic is forced through that in a single lane, it's quite tight. Cycle paths are great until you get this sort of situation where you see somebody has planted lampposts right in the middle. So the shared cycle path is a bit of an afterthought clearly, which is the case with many in the UK. Now you don't have to use the path, you can use the road, there's no requirement to use the path. And in a case as you see coming up here, it's sometimes a good idea because it's very overgrown, it's not very ma well maintained, it's quite tight between those cars and especially if you had pedestrians coming along you'd have to be very careful. Another thing to watch out for is when it's bin day because people leave their bins out on the path or indeed it might be that the refuse collectors have left them there after collecting. Either way it's an obstacle. There are lots of residences along this road and we have a hospice here on the left and that means that there will be traffic coming in and out. People can be distracted uh, so make sure that you watch the junctions carefully and that people aren't coming out uh, unexpectedly because they won't, they won't think to stop very often. You see the path's very rough here, starting to break up so you've got to be very careful. This is actually a downhill section. And here, just when we need a cycle path into the town, it comes to an abrupt halt. Now, if I was a new cyclist and not used to the roads, I would probably get off and, and walk down under the bridge. As it is, we're going to go out onto the road and you'll see that we're coming down under a bridge which is fairly narrow. And then we'll come up to a fairly busy roundabout. So road's clear, so we'll move off. Because this bridge is fairly narrow, I don't want anybody attempting to overtake me in the, under the bridge. And also then might not see me very clearly, even though I have got a rear light. So I'm staying in the centre of my lane. You'll see that by the position of these arrows. I'm sort of passing over the arrows. Roundabout's clear, straight across. Again, staying in the middle of my lane. I don't want people coming past me at this point. Uh, I am going to go straight on at this roundabout, and I don't want somebody coming up beside me to the right, who will then immediately turn left. So I'm controlling the lane. My normal position 
when I'm riding is primary position, which is a third of the way out into the lane. This position helps you to be seen and keeps you clear of drain covers, potholes, that sort of thing. You can see now that I've moved back into primary. It gives cars chance to pass, I don't want to hold them up. We have a left turn coming up at these lights and I don't want anybody clipping me on this corner so again I'm out in the lane and pull back over to primary as we've passed. Coming up now to a right hand turn and uh, again I'm in the middle of the lane so I'm controlling my lane and we'll get a right filter shortly and uh, away we go. Now if you already drive a motor vehicle you're pretty much there as far as riding a bike in traffic goes. If you can maintain the mindset of being a, a car driver for example you'll ride your bike in a much more confident way and there's no reason why you shouldn't ride your bike the way you would drive a car. So I'm now pulling back over to primary to let people get past and you'll see uh, that some pretty sensible overtaking here they're waiting for a gap in the traffic before they come past but I'm not going too too slowly so I'm not causing them too much of a problem and here they come There is a left hand uh, turn coming up. I'm going to go right, but traffic will turn left. So again, I want to make sure that nobody's coming up the right hand side uh, to swing over to the left. So I'm back in the center of my lane again. Stopping here before the yellow box because I can't get through. Okay, so we're back in the centre of this lane again. Uh, we're going straight across this roundabout and you'll see that uh, now the way is clear. I'm crossing the roundabout just as I would in a car. There is talk of allowing cyclists to go around the outside of a roundabout, but I think that's extremely dangerous and I think he's asking for trouble. So we're coming back under the bridge again and this time we're going to go right at the roundabout. So right over on the right again using it just as I would in a car. Watching for traffic on the left coming out of the supermarket made eye contact with the driver. You can see we've got a central reservation here so I'm keeping out in the road. And coming up here on the left you'll see a car just about to come out. I've made eye contact with that driver. Now I could, if I wanted to, go up the side of this uh, car, this is known as filtering. Uh, I'm not doing it because I'm not in a hurry, but had I been in a hurry or you know, commuting to work, then I would have done. You've got to be very careful though, because people can open a car door in your face as the passenger decides to get out. You can hit a pothole, all sorts of problems can happen. The other thing that can happen is that the car that you're coming up the inside of could suddenly turn left and if that happens you're going to get wiped out and as you'll see here this driver doesn't even bother to indicate. Now I find myself in the wrong lane here so a quick look over my shoulder the road is clear. So taking the centre of the lane again I could filter here but the driver in front may suddenly decide they're in the wrong lane and turn left so not worth the risk.
Now here's a regular hazard for cycle lane users. This big hole that's covered up has been here for months now. So it forces us out onto the road. Now this set of traffic lights has what's known as an advanced stop line. It's designed for cyclists and it allows us to get ahead on the junction. Now if I was turning right I would sit on the right hand side of the box. If I'm going straight across I'll be in the middle and if I'm going left I would still be in the middle and that avoids cars coming across uh, from the right to the left. Coming under this bridge again, uh, back in the centre of the lane because this is uh, traffic light controlled and I have found that I've had drivers squeeze by me under that bridge so it's best to stick in the middle. wasn't going very slow so no problem. Now here on the left you can see a typical problem with uh, parked cars. Uh, they could easily open the door without looking and uh, you'd be wiped out. Now being in this position I was fortunate to spot this lady. Now she did make eye contact with me but decided she could still make it. Had I been any closer would she have still come out? I don't know. There's a chap coming out on the left here. Uh, he was stopping but I used a bit of courtesy and let him out. It's nice to be nice and it improves the reputation of cyclists. Now, plenty of car drivers complain about us not using cycle lanes, but uh, they're all too happy to park in the cycle lane as this taxi has done. It's a shared path, so we've got pedestrians coming the other way, so just giving them a bit of space. Here we are back on another cycle path, this time going out of town, and we see another hazard coming up. This is where a road junction uh, crosses the path. I've seen plenty of cyclists just sail over these junctions without even looking. Highly dangerous. Now it is, it is likely that the rule will be changed so that cyclists and pedestrians have the right of way. But you know how everybody follows the highway code so make sure you look first. And now we're heading home on the beautiful Grantham Canal and we spot our first traffic jam of the day. Well, thanks for watching and I hope you found this video useful. If you do feel you can like and subscribe, that will be much appreciated. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time.